Hey, hey, welcome back, folks. What if we begin today by retracing our steps? As we go through life, many of us begin to see we're faced with limitations in our choices. Feels like gone were the days when we were kids and can imagine to be whatever we want and be wherever we want. Now we've become the so-called boring adults who often say, no, that's not possible. It's too expensive and easier said than done. Money, family, and circumstances, yeah, tied down to reality, as they say. But what if there never was a need to be tied down like that? What if we were just reimagine these events? What if limitations never existed and we realized they were just excuses for ourselves? Would things have been different? Would you have chosen differently? So let's begin our parade, the parade of what ifs. An adventure, an encounter, a mutual love, a space for solitude, a chance to go out and breathe life. When there's no limitations to what you can experience, is that when your personality speaks out for yourself? Do you finally have a chance to hear your own opinions? Come, come, join the parade. Ready or not, here we go. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Cindy. And yeah, let's begin with our what if parade questions. My first one that I came up with was what if if you never had to work again? First, would you and what would you do? But I have a question to that question. Do you mean yeah. like I would never have to work, but I have like all the capabilities like money? Oh, yeah, money, like financially. <laughs> Am I some, like, all these limitations we mentioned before? Yeah, forget yeah. that. <laughs> Never need to work again. What if you were given that option? I thought about this and I decided my answer would be I wouldn't work because if I was financially sustainable without having to work, I would be able to invest my time in something that I like or something I can give. Some things I thought of was like, I would invest in art because I really want to do it, but I just don't have the capabilities right now. Or even like give back by, you know, funding hospitals or like donating. Because one of my dreams when I was young, there was a drama where there would be these people, you don't know who they are, but they fund surgeries for people who can't afford the surgery by looking mm. into their situation and you know just helping out without actually identifying yourself so I thought that was cool and that's what I wanted to mm. do so maybe if I didn't have to work I would you know look into those hospitals see who I can help out so right, in fun. a way it's like you're starting your lifetime goal earlier than mm -hmm. You would have if you had to work yeah exactly hmm, i see that for me i totally agree with Han. like i probably invest in what i like to do i like to travel and i feel like traveling can give you multiple inspiration for many things and right now i really don't know i mean besides like being a singer which is my ultimate dream mm -hmm. i really don't know what's a more realistic passion of mine so i if i didn't have to be a slave to a contract anymore <laughs> I would go out to various parts of the world and try to gain inspiration, see various cultures, learn various cultures, and try to discover what I really want to do. I feel you. Actually, my what I would do would be something similar to you as well. If I had the option of never needing to work, I would have chosen to be a, a traveling composer because then, then that would be possible. There would be time for it, time to create the sound that I like and then travel. Meanwhile, get to know the cultures and all that. So definitely this kind of question really gets to where if we didn't have all these limitations, what would we do? When we were like planning this podcast, we were all like, of course we would work because if you work, you have this goal in mind. But now we're just all like doing whatever we want, you know, if we have the time and money. So I guess it changes. If you have time and money, why not? Why not pursue really? the things you want to do in your life yeah. and discover an unknown version of you that you wouldn't have gotten to know if you had to be a slave to a contract? <laughs> My next question is, what if you had to pick one song as your theme song for this moment? Which what would it be and why? This question, even though we came up with it the other day, I still haven't found my answer. I love all songs, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to go with time of my life. And the ironic thing is, I'm not having the time of my life right now. <laughs> 
so so maybe it's the irony (laughs) maybe it is i'm in lockdown and i'm miserable but yet this song popped in my head when i wrote this sentence Mm, for me right now this moment mine would be (laughs) bts life goes on yes (laughs) i've been listening a lot to these songs these days because now as we mentioned last episode andrew and i are stuck in shanghai in quarantine and like i especially connect very very much to the first two stanzas of the song it's like all of a sudden the world just stops spring didn't learn to wait yeah, for Andrew and I, March and April just passed. So it's like spring just passed without giving any notice. So I very much connect with the lyrics. And that's why I feel that's the song I have right now. It talks about reality, but also in a way it supports you. It's okay. Life goes on. Right. Actually, one of the songs that I had in mind was also BTS. <laughs> I, lo- I love their songs. It's very realistic. So you kind of feel from it. So it like tells you the reality by acknowledging it instead of just fantasizing about it. The song that I thought of was Love Myself Answer. So the lyric is more like, yeah, loving yourself, but realizing the fact that you're always so much harder on yourself than harder on others so you really like push yourself down and you blame yourself more often than you should be yeah so i think that's just the motto of my life think about yourself you know as well don't always think about others even though it might sound selfish but you need to be healthy in your mind (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. bts lyrics are so poetic oh my god yeah i agree (laughs) here's a fun question uh what if you could give yourself one million dollars or just a helping hand to any past point in time of your life when would this be and why Mm -hmm. i thought about this i have my answer and it's right now (laughs) (laughs) it'd be great if someone could just hand me a million dollars or just advice in general right now to Mm. start off what i want to do with my life because after you graduate you have so many opportunities so maybe have someone to guide me through it i think it's also the reason why we created this podcast in the first place To kind of guide anyone to any decisions in life, you know, being there just for the process of like the hardship and the decisions that you'll have to make. So Mm. right now would be a good time to randomly (laughs) get some million dollars. Yes, thank you. For me, not really realistic, but like I would give my past self, my 2008 self, $1 million and ask her to put it in a mutual fund so I can be rich (laughs) today. I would be like, young Angela, go to a bank and put your money in. You would actually get more than probably a million dollars now. It would have inflated and everything. I would get so much money (laughs) yeah i'll be a millionaire (laughs) and then i'll invest it in apple or something Mm -hmm. or no tesla man oh my god can you imagine like the three of us we actually lived through that era when tesla was nothing when alibaba was nothing instagram was nothing you know we went through that whole process but it's it came so natural though crazy Mm -hmm. super crazy yeah i (laughs) my god i think three of us want money (laughs) I know. Because <laughs> the thing is, like, I thought about, like, you know, uh, helping hand. Yeah, like the most downest point in my life, it would have been nice if someone could help. But in a way, it's like I was able to become who I am today because I passed through that phase by myself. It's like a feeling. So I guess the realistic choice for me to make is the million dollars. I would give it to the middle school me (laughs) in sixth or seventh grade. When schoolwork hasn't got too hard yet, I should go out and play more, explore the whole of South Africa, my family. That'd be great. And then also after school, have a car. have a driver hired they can pick me up on time there have been so many afternoons i remember at least when i was in school where i had to wait for a very long time because my parents like they had work so when they came to fetch me sometimes it got really really late yeah i think a lot of time would have been saved if i had money then to give myself a driver be home and do some fun stuff maybe i should make some investment as angela does (laughs) that'd be maybe a smarter choice (laughs) What if you guys were granted one of your childhood dreams and that childhood dream could come true? What will it be and why? Immediately for me, I would be a singer. Till from age, I don't even know if I can remember coming out of the womb, but if I could remember that moment, it would be that moment where I wanted to sing. I just know I love performing. Like my grandma Mm -hmm. would say like um, when I was four or five, I was in China. And then, you know, at nighttime, like there would be old ladies dancing in the park with music my Uh grandma said I would just go up and I would be like the center of them dancing and I know the choreography
choreography for some reason. That's yeah, so- I just love performing. I, I just love like, I don't know, like arts. And I wish I could mm-hmm. pursue it if I had the ability to or the finance to. And that's the thing. Like if I have money, like, I wouldn't even worry. Like I'll apply to an art major for college. Mm-hmm. Actually have mm-hmm. the courage to apply to NYU Tisch. But if I was given the chance to have one of my childhood dreams come true, which I have so many, it's so bad. <laughs> I get influenced by whatever I watch. Literally like Detective Conan, I want to be a detective and I wanted to be one for eight years. And then I watched Prince of Tennis and I want to be a tennis player. And then I watched <laughs> Stam Dunk and I wanted to be a basketball player. And it's like, I get influenced all the time. There was one point I even thought of being a wizard, but you know, realized <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter world doesn't really exist. But hey, I wanted to be hey. a wizard too. <laughs> yeah, so many dreams. But but if I was given a chance to have any of those come true, I would actually pick the detective. That one I had like for eight years. So I was very committed. Like I read so many like detective books preparing myself. And like at that time, I remember I would sit in a conversation, you know, when your parents have talks and all that. And I would observe, oh, you know, this lady's hands look like she's been cooking a while. Just <laughs> self pretending. Like it's it's not really useful. But like, you know, I think if, if I didn't have any <laughs> fears or limitations, then I would have that. What is it like being a detective? Of now in this modern age you know that'd be an interesting thing that, to imagine yeah that'd be cool i can still imagine cindy there is a forensic scientist you know detecting and observing check Ooh. all the fingerprints and everything yeah i also had a lot of childhood dreams because i used to dance when i was young so i wanted to be a dancer but i wasn't a pop dancer i was more like a traditional dancer i guess one of my childhood dreams that i would i kind of think about one is a model still what if i didn't know the harsh realities of being a model Mm. and I just dived right in and I just adjusted it to it naturally you know what if that happened and where would I be like it's curious that and maybe a prosecutor as well like I think these childhood dreams if I didn't know the harsh reality of getting to that position I would have maybe tried you know if going into it blindly sometimes is so much faster than like getting to know all the steps and getting to know the hardships And then you just giving up on it. So maybe like model and prosecutor, they're like two different things. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think those would be my two. Or finance and going into blindly and opportunity and everything happened. The right time, right moment plays a key factor. Yeah, And I do also agree with what Han said before. I think some things it's better when you you're ignorant about it you've heard of that ignorant is bliss i think in some cases like you know that childhood dream sometimes we have it because we don't know of all these struggles of all these realistic options we have to think about like one thing i didn't become a detective was like oh you know it's an unsteady income and it's dangerous but like (laughs) if i didn't think of that stuff If I could pursue it, then I don't know. Maybe I would have become a detective eventually. But I think Mm -hmm. like if you still love that and you still have that in you, it's never too late to do it. That reminds me, you know, like even though singer is long gone, performing like being an actress, maybe I should just drop everything in my life and go to LA, be a waitress (laughs) and audition. (laughs) One day. Yeah, that's one step at a time. You could pursue it. I guess Mm -hmm. moving on, if you guys had a friend that you spoke to the same way you speak to yourself, so your personality is just your friend, what would you Mm -hmm. do and would you guys be friends? I would be BFFs with myself. That's what I would be because you know why? Why? I love my flamboyant self because mentally cheering myself on, you know, it's not the same Mm. effect that somebody else just be like, you go get it, girl. Mm -hmm. I talk the same way to myself and to anybody that I know. If I was to meet someone like myself, like the way I speak to myself, I would be very concerned about that friend because I would think (laughs) that friend has bipolar disorder (laughs) Um, only because I'm not consistent the way I talk to myself. Like some days I'll be like, Cindy, you genius. You are so smart. How did you do this? And then next moment I'll be like, Cindy, you're a fucking idiot. No. you're so stupid like I can't believe you exist in the world and it's just imagine having a friend like that oh oh my god (laughs) it's good to know you but I don't want to be close with you (laughs) so like I think you need help too (laughs) not just myself (laughs) 
the way I speak to myself is this is sad, but I often <laughs> degrade myself. But I find it humorous that I'm not doing something well. So I'll be like, "Wow, Hatton, I can't believe you made that mistake." It's kind of like Cindy's dark side, I guess. But constantly, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> I need more of Angela and positivity. I would totally, you know, just say bye. Like, I don't need you in my life. I have <laughs> enough of that in my head, and I don't need that physically. Oh my god, it's so weird. <laughs> like the three of us are so different. I, I mean, all three of us speak to ourselves. Apparently, this has been made clear. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> imagine that as a friend. Oh, that would be yes, very concerning. We need more of Angela's. <laughs> and then the thing is, there were a couple moments in my life that, like, I always wanted a twin. Where mm. can I find in this world another version of me? <laughs> Sometimes I had these moments and thoughts. I'm like, we'll travel together. We'll be flamboyant every day. I feel that I just need someone else with the same complex background as me. <laughs> <laughs> like, <Yeah>. same. <laughs> let's stop asking where I'm from and let's just go out and play. <laughs> yeah. You know. I guess we're going down to some of my last questions, but these are more of questions for ourselves. So my first question is: What if three of us were siblings? Do you guys think we would fight? How would we get along? Like, who's the eldest? Who's the youngest? What do you guys think? Oh, we already know who's going to be the eldest. <laughs> yes, right, Angela. I, it is you, Han. <laughs> you yes. shall be the eldest. <laughs> You'll be our big sister. <laughs> oh, yes. You're definitely sipping that. I mean, even asking that question, you sound much more composed than the two of us. We are definitely the younger siblings. Yes. Um, Me and Cindy are hooligans. <laughs> We're going to be that typical three kids family where it's the middle yeah. and the small child is like constantly in a fight. But it's who sincere. shall be the middle though? Huh? What do you think? The thing is I had a different plan because I disagreed because I don't like being the eldest. But if I was the eldest, I would immediately see Cindy as the middle child and Angela mm-hmm. as the youngest. I can see Cindy giving constructive feedback to Angela being the sister and all. And Angela just like not listening. <laughs> I'll take the advice if I agree with it. And if I don't agree, I'll be like, nah. Yeah. And when you go, nah, I'm going to fight with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's then why Han just oldest. stands on the side and be like, here we go again. <laughs> I need to be the fixer upper. I was going to say like, if we didn't pick you the eldest, what did you think? Yeah. Any- well, in my fantasy, I wanted Angela as the middle child, me as the youngest and Sydney as the oldest. I can see that in like a different dimension too. Yeah. Like see, this yeah, is, in a like, different dimension. This is like planned. I see Sydney as more of being the realistic sister, you know, that I need. She'll give me like suggestions on how to apply for universities, like, you know, how, where to find jobs, how to network, etc. Because of that reality, Reality hitting me I would need Angela my other older sister to kind of you know give me the push to actually do it that's mm. like this total support system but I feel like in that dimension though I wouldn't be that you know typical like very serious only realistic sister I think I would be yes I would give advice but if the two of you fight I would join in the fight <laughs> you know <laughs> just as immature <laughs> then we don't get anywhere but hey that would be a very fun <laughs> dimension or Angela and you fight and I'm just the youngest like looking at you guys and be like this is the reality <laughs> oh yeah the two older sisters fight and mm-hmm. I think like in both of these dimensional worlds I think all three of us even though we'll fight and everything we'll be totally supportive of one another and we'll mm. tell like people like only us we can bully each other but nobody else can bully us like if we see another person bullying us we were like gang up <laughs> we'd be like nah excuse me <laughs> what do you mean my sister's too stuck up <laughs> yeah she's the best yeah. sister ever <laughs> and and i would be like if we were the younger ones we'd be on the same page on that <laughs> despite yeah. fighting all the time because i feel like we would know each other so well our weakest spots and if you trigger that weak spot like i would know how my sister would react Mm. okay so moving on to our last question i think it's a good one to wrap up this episode it's what if you could choose one characteristic of each other which characteristics would you pick and why for me I'll start off with Han and then Cindy. A characteristic Mm -hmm. of Han that I admire is you give off this like 
elegant aura when you're like meeting mm. new people or like in a professional setting like there is this aura you give off that I don't know attracts people in a very professional way and like you really know to uh, think before you say which is something that I'm practicing on. also to showcase my professionalism and then for Cindy I always admire how you pull off things so well so like mm. even if you procrastinate you will do it well and for yeah. me I can't do that if I procrastinate my work is a uh, Shintucky mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> but Cindy, it seems like you procrastinate. Your work is not Kentucky mushrooms. Your work is flawless. I envy that. I envy that. Actually, sometimes it's better if I do it last minute than doing it beforehand, which is hard for me to manage. I don't know what to do, but I get where you come from. And that's the interesting thing because, like, the characteristic I would have wanted from you was time management, you being on top of things. Even you were just sharing about like your potential for Japan and Portugal. You already had you did so much research and all that i envy that because i don't think i have that until like the last minute i'm deciding okay i'm gonna go then i'll prepare myself not until then i wouldn't do that much of research and i think that kind of time management you have for yourself is really amazing which is one thing i would want to have Something from Han is, I mean, now I'm getting better, I think, as our podcast is going on. But I remember originally when we first started, like, sometimes I would have, you know, little conflicts with Angela. And the way you would respond, it's like, you're so good at giving very concrete feedbacks that are helpful and not hurtful. <laughs> you know what does that mean? Because I feel like sometimes my inner voice would be like, nah don't do that like what are you thinking that's what I feel but Han is actually saying something similar but in the less offensive like she gives it in a very sound feedback and I think that's a characteristic which is really amazing and really keeps things in balance yeah Han's the older sister let me tell you (laughs) you see (laughs) I guess for my sibling I'll start off with Sydney first I really admire Cindy's like attention to detail in terms of anything like her job as well. It's kind of what Angela said about doing things last minute, but they're very good. Whatever you provide and whatever you finish doing, like the result, it's very precise and very polished. So I really admire that sophisticated art of precision and attention to detail. It seems like even though you might not have anything planned, you know what to do after each step. So I think that's one of the characteristics that I would steal off of Cindy. And another thing I would steal off of Angela is I always admire this from the minute I saw you, Angela. It's your positivity, sunshine bubble <laughs> that you have. Yeah, I need sunshine and I give know, sunshine. <laughs> such like a I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say negative I'm just a I'm like a neutral human being but realistic. like I need some push you know sometimes just a drive and I think Angela has mm. that and she tells herself that as well so it's very prominent and I think that's one of the characteristics that I would take away from you why thank you hun <laughs> So Um, wrapping everything, hope you guys had fun listening to us chat about our fantasies and wishes because we sure had fun preparing for this episode. And a lot of the questions, we actually went off script. So it was very nice to listen to you guys' minds. I think this is one of the most heartwarming episodes I've said. Well, it never hurts like, to get lost in your thoughts from time to time. Yes, Han. Thank you so much for wrapping today's episode up. And thank you guys for tuning in today's episode of What If. And if you haven't, please subscribe, like, and leave a rating for Banana Corn and recommend this to all your family and friends and follow us on Instagram, Banana Corn PD. And come back and join us on our next episode. This is us. Bye. Bye. Bye.